How to make a penguin puppet. To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch and glue. All of the dolls will make a shake. If you wanna be in the know when to play like a pro, subscribe to Puppet Nerd. Welcome back Puppet Nerds, Adam Krutinger here and today I'm going to teach you how to put together this penguin puppet. This is a super cute puppet that I've been meaning to build for a long time. And it's pretty simple to put together but there's some couple different techniques that it uses different than other puppets that we've built in the past. Here are some of the supplies you're going to need. Three colors of fleece, I like to use blue, yellow, and white, half inch reticulated foam, thin plastic for a mouth plate, some thin batting for quilting, a piece of white felt, some stuffed animal eyes, two sets of doll joints, Optional is some lining fabric. I like to use jersey. Click right here if you want to learn how to make your very own puppet patterns. But if you want to save time and support this channel, you can order the exact same pattern from puppetnerd.com. All the links are down in the description. Anyway, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is trace out our pattern. This is a half inch reticulated foam. And keep in mind, even though the front and back of the pattern are similar, they actually are different sizes. So make sure you trace each one of them. And while I'm here, I'm gonna trace out the foam beaks too. Be sure to mark the notches. Now you could just cut these pieces out, but I'm gonna add a quick step. Today I'm going to glue some lining fabric to the back of this foam. That way when I cut out these pieces and glue them together, this puppet's going to be pre-lined. It's not a necessary step, but it is a nice touch. Feel free to skip this step if you'd like. Make sure you glue it to the side that you did not trace. And my glue of choice is Super 74. Be sure when spraying this to be in a well-ventilated area. And now that this fabric is glued to this foam, there's a little bit more to cut through. It's most easy to let this sit overnight so that the glue cures completely. Otherwise, your knife might get a little gummy. But it is possible to cut if you're in a rush. You just have to be extra careful. So now I'm going to start cutting out this pattern with this nice brand new Persona blade. Make sure to cut slowly and try to keep your edges as even as possible. You don't want to accidentally cut these at a bevel. Now that we have our foam pieces all cut out, next I like to cut out the mouth plate out of this type of plastic. This is plastic that you could find on a storage bin, but any reasonably thick plastic should work. I also like to lightly hit the edges with sandpaper. There we go. Now I'm gonna start gluing it together with some contact cement. Masters is my favorite, but you can use whatever you like. So I'm gonna apply some glue around the outside edge of this upper foam piece. This is the foam for the beak. And around the bottom of this upper mouth plate. All right, now we have our upper mouth plate here all prepped and glued. Ignore the sticker there that just happened to be on my packaging. And my foam piece here is also glued around the edges. Now I let them sit for a couple minutes to get tacky so we can connect it right away. Now here's what we're gonna do. You can notice this is much larger, so we have to ease it in. Kind of like gathering, which is a sewing term if you're familiar with that technique. But what I'm gonna start off doing is gluing the outer edge right here. And the way you do it is you want it to glue to the underneath like that. So it's almost like you'd put it on top this way, but we're doing it inside out. So watch, I'm bending it around like this and then carefully turning the foam around like that. 
okay? And we want the tip of the beak to line up at this corner too. So what we're going to do is carefully start gathering it in all the way up to that point, just like this. And as you gather it, it's going to make it much easier to turn this foam around in on itself. One thing that's nice about turning the foam around and wrapping it around that ledge is it kind of makes a nice little lip for your puppet. You'll notice this is how I've done pretty much all my puppets in my past videos that have a foam head. And I found it works particularly nice with this penguin puppet and gives that beak a nice cartoony look. And now we have a really nice looking beak here. And now we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom. There you go. And then you just do the same thing to the bottom one. And now we have a nice little beak. Next, I'm gonna glue the darts at the top and bottom of each side here, and then around the perimeter of both of these pieces. All right, now I'm gonna start putting these darts together. All right, so now I have those darts all closed up, and I'm gonna put these two halves together. And there we have our little penguin body. So here is our penguin body. You can tell which side is the front and back. Also, you should have already traced this oval in the front too, so that should give it away as well. Now this oval marks the outside of the glue line for the beak. So it lines up right on the outside of that line on the top and bottom for both beak pieces. So what you wanna do is measure down depending on the thickness of the foam you're using. In this case, I'm using a half inch foam on the beak. So I wanna measure down about a half inch all the way around the inside of this hole. And then carefully cut it out. And there we go, we have a nice hole. Next, I'm gonna glue the beaks onto the front of that mouth, just like this. Now he's starting to look like an Among Us character. Let me know down in the comments if that's a puppet build you'd maybe like to see. All right, now let me put this on here. Line it up carefully. Yeah. Now he's starting to work really well. Starting to look like a puppet. And there he is. He's really starting to look like a puppet now and the mouth moves really well. This is gonna be great. Okay, so there's the foam. Now before we start getting into the fabric, I wanna add a ring to the bottom. This'll keep them a little bit stronger and give them a little bit more form. For that, I like to use PVC pipe. What I do is I take a piece and I slice off just about a half inch and it ends up looking kinda like this. This makes a great entrance ring. So I'm gonna glue it in right at the bottom here. But I wanna get it behind this fabric. So today, I'm gonna cut a little slit about halfway through the foam and kind of wedge it between that. So that's gonna be much stronger for our puppet. Okay, so the foam is pretty much done. Now what I'm gonna do is cover the belly using a pattern piece that looks kinda like this. And for that, I'm going to use some white Antron fleece. But I'm not just gonna use the fleece, I'm also gonna use some batting like this, which is some thin cushion that they use for quilting, and a piece of felt for the backing. And what I'm going to do is sandwich these layers together just like that. What that does is that lets the belly stick out a little bit on this puppet, which I think looks really cute. But first we have to trace the patterns. So first I'm gonna do the fleece. 
Be sure to mark the notches. All right, there we have it. I have the felt back, I have the fleece front, and I have the batting middle. The batting and the fleece I cut out to the exact size, and I added about a quarter of an inch of seam allowance around the edge of the fleece. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down my felt, then I'm gonna put down my batting, and then I'm gonna put down the fleece on top of it. And then I'm going to pin around this to keep it still, make sure to match up the notches on the back. Then I'm gonna stitch all the way around this shape like that and around the inside where the beak goes. All right, so there it is all stitched up. You can see from the ends, what happened is, since the top layer was a, just a hair wider, since we added the seam allowance, it really curves around this piece and almost makes it like a tiny bit of a bowl in a way, which is gonna be perfect when we attach it onto here. So let me just do a dry fit right here. Slide the beak through. You can already see how this little belly is starting to stick out and it's already looking super cute. So next, let's work on covering the beak. Next, I'm gonna make the beak covering, and for that, I'm gonna use this yellow fleece. Then you trace the pattern piece that looks like this. So I'm gonna trace this out twice. Be sure to mark the notches. All right, now I'm gonna stitch these together along this top part here until that notch and just a small section along the bottom. Okay, that is all stitched up. Now I'm gonna move on to the fabric mouth plate. For that, I'm gonna use some velvet that has a little bit of a stretch to it, but it doesn't have to. If you do have a stretch, make sure it goes across. And then I'll trace out the mouth plate pattern. All right, now that we have our fabric mouth plate finished, we're gonna put it inside of our beak. I'm gonna start off by pinning it in and lining up those notches. So now you'll notice that it's a little loose fitting, the beak around the fabric mouth plate, and that's because you have to carefully ease it in, almost like gathering the fabric. So it helps to put some more pins in so that you stitch it evenly. Because last thing you want to happen is you're stitching around and then you have a big section left over. You don't want that. So you want to carefully ease it in. And now I'm just going to stitch all the way around.
Okay, that's all traced on. Next, I'm gonna use this blue fleece to do the outside skin of the penguin. First thing to do is to trace out the pattern. All right, I have these pieces cut out. Next, I'm gonna start stitching the darts together. And after the darts are stitched together, I'm gonna to stitch from the tip of the widow's peak all the way down around the head and down the back. Okay, now this cover is all stitched up, so I'm gonna start assembling all of these pieces. Next, we're gonna be attaching the belly and the beak fabric. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. In the video today, you're gonna to see the most simple way of doing it, which is using mostly glue. It's much more simple and takes a lot less time because you don't have to stitch it. But if you click right here, there's a link to a short video where I do the alternative stitching method instead. But if you watch that, make sure to come back so you know how to finish the puppet. Anyway, let's keep going. To start off with, I'm gonna attach the beak. And to do that, I'm gonna use some contact cement. I'm going to start off by putting a light layer of contact cement around the inside rim of the beak. And then very lightly, I'm going to put a little bit of contact cement around the outside of this fabric mouth plate. And then carefully set it in. Be sure to line up the notches. Then I'm gonna carefully wrap this back around. And now I'm gonna use some Fabri-Tac to glue it down right along the rim of the beak. And there we go, there's a nice little beak. Okay, now that that's on, what we wanna do is glue on this piece as well. We're gonna glue around the inside where the beak goes and around the perimeter too. But first we wanna do this spot. But you're not gonna glue it on this end, you're actually gonna glue it on this end. Because if you put it on this and then try to slide this on, you're gonna wipe glue all over this beak, which you don't wanna do. So again, I'm gonna put a line of glue going all the way around the perimeter of this beak. And again, I'm using the Fabri-Tac. Make sure it's lined up best you can. And carefully press in right on those seams where you glued it. And you wanna make sure that this piece is perfectly straight as well before you start tacking it down, which I'm gonna start doing now. So I'm gonna be gluing right on the very edge of these seams and then holding it down. I like to do this in sections and let it dry between each section. All right, there he is. The belly is all glued on. And now what I'm going to do is drape this covering around him too. I like to line up the top seam just like this and then carefully wrap it around him. Try to keep it even, matching up the back seams. And then I'm gonna start pinning it on. And now see this, uh, this comes down just like that. And you can have it come down as low as you want. 
This is about as low as it can go, but you can also kind of fold it up a little bit if you want it to be a little bit softer of a line. You can even trim it, just make sure to cover that stitch or put a little thread stopper on there so it doesn't unravel. But I'm going to, I'm gonna bend it back just a little bit. Like that. Pin it down. There we go. So then next, I'm gonna stitch this small piece here and then do a slip stitch going all the way around the white. All right, next, this isn't exactly necessary, but I like to do a stitch all the way around the beak here. And for that, I'm gonna use a slip stitch. And there's his body all put together. Now we're gonna work on his wings. There's a wing pattern that looks like this, and you'll notice that it has a section cut out. I'm gonna trace the first layer before we cut that out. To do that, I'm gonna do it on some blue fleece. And now I'm gonna cut on that line. You only have to do this part if you want the tip of the wing on one side to be a different color. Otherwise, just leave it as one piece. Now I'm gonna trace this twice too. Now I have my blue fabric traced. Next, I'm gonna do the white. And now let's go ahead and cut these pieces out. If you're gonna stitch it on a sewing machine, be sure to leave at least a quarter inch of seam allowance. Today I'm gonna stitch it all by hand. Okay, so these pieces we're gonna attach together just like that. And then stitch the whole thing like a little pocket just like this. Now I'm gonna stitch from about here to around all the way around the top down to about here. But I'm gonna leave a little pocket open for two reasons. Number one, so I can turn this inside out. And number two, so I have a spot to put my arm rods later. First, I'm gonna put these two pieces together to make one side of the wing. So 
So we got those two sides ready and we're gonna stitch them together just like this. However, I'm gonna leave about two inches open right about here, so that way I can turn it inside out as well as use it as a spot to put the arm rods. There we go, so I left this little spot open right there. All right, next I'm gonna make the foam wings. So let me cut these out. Okay, next I'm gonna create the arm rod pocket. For this puppet today, I'm gonna to use some of this scrap fleece. So I'm just gonna fold this in half like that and I'm gonna put it right about there. This is about three inches long by about one and a half inches wide. I'm gonna fold it in half just like this, and I'm gonna stitch along this side and this side, making a little pocket. Okay, so there's the little pocket, and what I'm gonna do is glue one side of this down to the back of the foam, but I just wanna make sure I line it up perfectly like this. And I'm gonna line it up exactly where that opening is on the fabric. So I'm gonna glue that down right there. I'm gonna leave just about a quarter of an inch of it peeking out, that way it can stitch around the edges easily. All right, that is all glued on. And now what I'm gonna do is turn this inside out and then stuff it. Okay, there we are, there are the flippers. I'm gonna stitch this close and stitch it around the opening of that little pocket. But before I do that, I wanna add one thing. Today I'm gonna attach the arms using these doll joints. It's almost like a screw and washer, except for it doesn't thread, and once it pushes in, it's permanent. So what I'm gonna do is have this peg go through the body, and then this piece here is gonna go up into the arm. So I have to put this in here before I stitch that closed. So I'm gonna put one of these in each fin. All right, so now what I wanna do is attach this. So you can kind of do it as high or as low as you want to. I like to do it just below the bottom of the beak, probably right about there. And what I'm gonna do is put a little pin where I want it to be. That looks about right there. And then try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So right about... So now I'm gonna put a little hole right there and put this peg through it. Now I have that little locking washer. I'm gonna kind of wiggle its way up to right about there so that I can attach this to the puppet. Now I'm just gonna glue down uh, this edges. You can use Fabri-Tac or contact cement. Today I'm gonna use contact cement. Now 
Now I'm gonna add some pupils to this puppet. These are stuffed animal eyes, but you could use little bits of wood or really anything that you want. Now this is such a cute little puppet. I really love how he turned out. But before we end, I wanna show you how I attach the arm rods. So I have a link down in the description that teaches you how to make these arm rods. But once you have them, all you do is you put the tip of the arm rod into this pocket right here, and then you use a pin to keep it shut. Now this is a pin with a head on it. Typically, you'd use a flat head pin so that you can't see it as easily, but I think it's easier for you to see in the video if I use this one. But all I do is I go in and out right at the opening of that pocket, and that keeps this from falling out. Now I have full control over this wing. I can have him wave, I can have him move his arms like this, and it works out really well. And you do this for both wings. Or if you only want to control one wing at a time, you can just pin the wing to the side of the body. And just like that, we have the arm rods attached. So he can wave, and he can move his arms around, and it's really, really cute. Yeah, sure is. Well, if you enjoyed this build, I have hundreds of puppet builds right here on this channel. And for more tutorials and the latest puppetry news, make sure to check out PuppetNerd.com. There we have the latest information on things going on in the puppetry world. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.